So at this point, we've created our, our developer account with Amazon. And if we ever want to get back into it, you know, when you go home, you can always go back to developer.amazon.com and log in, and you'll get to this sort of screen. We've got several then tabs at the top here. Um, dashboard, apps and services, reporting, support, documentation, and settings. Uh, but this dashboard here, you'll get a various notifications when you first log in about changes uh, that are that are happening within the system and updates and such. But uh, if we switch over to apps and services, this is where we will be able to manage any apps that we're creating. So let's take a look there under apps and services. It says zero apps under this account. But then it's pretty easy to start the process here, isn't it? We've got add a new app on the right side. So you can create apps and distribute them uh, on Android, for the web, or PC and Macs. So under this apps and services, I will create add a new app Android. So title of our app, we've got a few required items here. Uh, we will call this, you know, uh, we've been calling it the, your last name and then my SDCE. So I can continue that. Your last name and then the name of the app. App SKU. Uh, I believe that stands for stock control unit or something. But that's an optional thing like a serial number for your app. So it could be anything like my app dash zero zero one. Anything that helps you keep track of your inventory, so to speak. I'm not gonna fill anything there because I don't have very many apps. The app title will suffice. Category, we don't have a lot of them, but hopefully your app fits into something appropriate here. I'm gonna say, since we're all developing the same kind of app, I'm gonna select education. It's related to education, perhaps, and other. This is just to help you get found when you're there with all the other, with all the other apps. If people are interested in some sort of, you know, cooking app, you've got a cooking app, um, you can definitely put it in that section. I'm going to go with education, other, and then customer support information that is all required, but notice it says use the information that I filled out on the previous screens, so I don't have to fill it out again. If I want something different, I can, I can change that. All of this can be changed, of course. So I'll save. And we have a bunch of screens to fill out. Let's see, so we've got um, in this screen, this is our current app we have where we can manage the reviews and um, specifically here we want to set up various aspects of the app like the availability and pricing. So under this tab where would you like this app to be available? The default is in all countries where Amazon sells apps, or I could say only these. And if I turn that on, then I can select the places that I want, but I'm gonna leave it on all countries. Are you charging for your app? So here you can select, it's a free app, or no, this is my price. Now if you do go with prices and such, we will be required to fill in that whole tax information section. But on this one, I will select no, it's free. Has this app already been released? So is this a version of an app that maybe already came out on Google Play or Apple App Store or on Windows Store? I can say yes, and it was already published elsewhere. But no, we're publishing brand new first under, under Amazon. I don't know if there's any you know, detriment to putting yes, I've already published elsewhere. 
I sort of feel that if you're publishing for the first time on Amazon, they might, you know, they might like that and give you a little preferential treatment and then maybe appear up on that, that new apps kind of screen when you visit the app store, you know, that new and notable screen. I don't know. Uh, usually I published my, I've published my apps on, on, Am on Google Play first and then put it on Amazon. I should try to see what happens the other way around, but we'll say that no, this is our first release. We can set this to publish later. We can set it to publish on a particular day and time and all of that, or if we leave it empty, it'll publish as soon as, as, soon as possible. I'll say that I'll do that. Do I want to be, be part of the FAD, the free app of the day? So yes, please consider me or not. And somewhere in the documentation it'll tell you maybe what you can do to qualify for that, but that might be good exposure. It can be the free app of the day, and it'll show up right in people's home screen when they go to the Amazon app. So I'll say, yeah, I'd like that. So all the deep defaults here for me at the moment are fine, so I'll save. Description. Description tab over here. All of these are required, or most of these are required. And again, I would want to really spend some time to handcraft this so that it's the most effective. Um, short description, a shorter version of your app, description for use on mobile devices, long description, which appears on the website. Uh, so the short one is up to 1,200 characters, the long one is up to 4,000. Product feature bullet, so we can do bullet points. Three to five concise app features, each on a new line. These product features will appear on your, on your app listing. Keywords. Search terms used to increase the discoverability of your app. Use commas or white space to separate your terms. So this is how you stand out. One of the ways you stand out, you know, a needle in a haystack. You put in the keywords that people might be searching for. So we'll see what we can do here. Uh, so for this particular app, a short description, I'm going to say something like, uh, keep up to date, up to date with the class offerings at San Diego Continuing Education. Again, this will be put out for real, out to the world, so you can put whatever you want here. You can unpublish it later. You could put something like here, not affiliated with Afflicted, not affiliated with San Diego Continuing Education. Under the longer description, I can go even further and say something like, have you ever wanted to learn about computers and art? our free app, etc., etc., etc. I'm not going to fill all of this out, but this is, uh, this is your marketing. This is how you hook people to buy the app. When you're brand new, when Instagram was brand new, when uh, these other apps, Snapchat, when they were brand new, they, they didn't have you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of users yet. It, it built up over time, and part of all of that is to create awareness for the app, to increase its discoverability. We'll talk about later, once it's all set up, we'll also talk more about the social aspect of it. Again, we might have this great app, no one knows about it. Maybe we've had our friends and family download it, but we want more people to do it. So, again, a lot of what we'll do in this class also is how do we get these apps found? We'll be talking about social media as well. going to add a little bit there. Product feature bullets. Right here, it's a, uh, I noticed that many of the things that we're going to do on this app store, we can repurpose over on Google Play. 
but there's a few things here and there that are different. And on Google Play, it doesn't have these bullet points. You can add bullet points in a way, but here Amazon gives you the space to add three to five bullet points. So I'm going to say, you know, what are some of the features here that sell our app? Like save uh, your own unique class list, get turn by turn navigation or uh, directions, get turn by turn directions to campus. What's another thing? Personalize your app. Personalize the app for your for yourself. Whatever. So some bullet points. What are the things that help it stand out that your app does at a glance? Keywords. Uh, we'll do college, comma, classes, comma, education, comma, free. What else might people be searching? Or what would entice people that this app does, you know, when you search? Computer art. Yeah, computer art. San Diego, you know, they're not going to want this app if they're in Kansas. Uh, although, that reminds me, uh, so I, I work at Southwestern College, there's also a Southwestern College in Kansas, now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, maybe people search SDCE, maybe the name of your company. Yeah, so continuing education as a single search term, I put it, notice that the way I, I would prefer to do it is with commas, because it said either use commas or spaces. But if you only use spaces, then you've got the term someone could search for continuing, but I want continuing education, so I separate these with commas. I could add translations here. So if I'm selling this app, you know, bilingually, I have this description, which is in English, and then I could click on save and add a translation and then write it again, but this time in Spanish or German or any other language. I'm not going to click that one though, I'm just going to click save. Notice that after you fill out a screen, it, it shows you what you wrote and you can always then continue to edit the screen. Here's a little something that I wrote for that section. The next tab I've got images. What's that? Now let me see. Did it take out all my commas? Oh, I see. Look at that, it separated San and Diego. Yeah. Alphabetize them also. Huh. Interesting. Let me try something here, actually. I'm going to go back to edit it, and sometimes this works, uh, depending on the provider. You can put it in quotes. Let me try that, San Diego in quotes. Nope, then it got confused. Interesting. So I put San over here and San over here. Yeah, look at that. Huh. All right, so don't do that. Now will it remove multiple instances of the same keyword? Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so that's my description. Notice as I'm filling out each of these items, I'm getting these green check marks. Eventually, I want them all green, and then I'll be able to publish and be live. Images and multimedia. We're going to get back to this next time, but here is where all of this branding that I should fill out to give people previews of what they're, what they're getting into. 
So you can make a note now or later, but we'll do it uh, later. We want a small icon. You know, it's the icon that's going to appear perhaps up here or other parts. It's 114 by 114 ping with transparency. A large icon, we should have that one done. If not, we'll make it again. We want some screenshots, previews of what of what it will look like. Three to, three to ten screenshots so that people know what they're getting. And it gives us the dimensions right here either portrait or landscape, and then these sizes. So we'll create screenshots next time. If we're going to be publishing this over to the Amazon Fire TV, we want these dimensions. They're different, uh, I guess they're the same, yeah, they're the same ones, but then if we know we're publishing to that platform, we can add them here too. So these are, rec these are required. This is promotional image recommended, and this is optional. So promotional image, that's the, a picture that might appear uh, you know, as a big banner graphic. It can only be landscape, ping, or JPEG. Those are the dimensions, 1024 by 500. This one's optional also. Um, a video. So obviously that takes a lot more work. At the very least, though, you saw my example for one of my apps, which is I just had the, my device, and with my mobile, I was recording it. That's it, and I uploaded it. No, actually, I think I put a little bit of titles or something into it, and then uh, I made a video. I just was, you know, recording myself using my app. That would work. So I don't have any of these at the moment. I need to get back to that screen, so I don't, I'm not going to complete images and multimedia just yet. Content rating. I should go in here and then select from all of these content rating sections. Either there are no instances of this, moderate amount of instances, or strong amount of instances. So moderate is occurs once or rarely and is not fundamental to the overall purpose and or intent of the app. And all of this is subjective, of course. Strong occurs regularly and is fundamental to the overall purpose. So violence, cartoon violence, drugs, nudity. None of these, I believe, to my knowledge, are app exhibits. So I suppose a person could fill in their name a certain way. That's not on us. Although they would uh, not allow you to pass the samples for violence. Yeah. Matter of fact, they've had some problems with even web browsers. Yeah. You know, because of their ability to. Their open ended nature. Yeah. So, uh, on all of these, I'm going to put none. There are no instances of violence, cartoon violence, drugs, nudity, sex, intolerance, profanity. And then there's academic. This application is for educational purposes. Yes. Additional info, account creation or other personal information collected. Mm, well, it does. You, a person could put in their username and the classes that they're saving. Um, I'll say yes. Advertisements? Nope. Child directed, and you could get more details there. No, it's for uh, college-aged students, so I'll say no. Any gambling? Nope. Location detection or location-based services? Yeah, we have a map. It needs to know where you're at. So I'll say yes. User-generated content or user-to-user -user communication? Um, technically, adding, I would say, adding uh, that class list and such is user-generated content. Um, I would be safe, you know, safe than, safer than sorry. So I would say, yeah, there's user-generated content. People, you know, the app is a certain way. When someone uses it, it changes. That's user-generated content. Privacy policy notice required if app collects personal information. Up on the top over here, I did say account personal info was created. So it's going to be required if I, if I do that. And this, again, is 
you would think, well, I'm making this app, I just want to put it out there. But there's a lot of details you have to keep track of, a lot of uh, bases you have to cover. So, for example, privacy policy. If we say that some information is being collected, we have to explain how that information is collected. So I need some sort of uh, website somewhere that has like one paragraph or sentence or something that explains what's the privacy policy of our app. Everyone's is going to be different if you're making your own app, uh, but I could, I could say this. If you do a search for privacy app, privacy policy boilerplate, app privacy policy generator or template or boilerplate, whatever, uh, I'll do that, app privacy policy template. You can go in here and perhaps find a link or two that has what you're looking for. Some, like a generator, I suppose, are going to ask you, does your app do this, or that, or this, or that? And once you answer that, then it'll generate some generic thing that says, you know, our app will collect this data, but only for the purposes of, uh, you know, user enhancement, etc. So you can look at that, free pri privacy policy generator. Yes, and then it's got to be some place online. It's got to be on some address. So, um, you know, let's say I had campus.com slash privacy dot HTML. You know, it's just somewhere online so that people can click on it to view it. It's not built into the app, but it's got to be online somewhere. So for the moment, you can make that up if you if you want to. Well, so let's save that. Binary files. This is where I can upload my actual APK file. So we've got apply Amazon DRM, protect your application from unauthorized use. Without DRM, your app can be used without restrictions by any user. Uh, so this will add a little bit of encryption to help protect your app so that people don't, I suppose, try to disassemble it or decompile it and all of that. It says, yes, recommended. You can turn that off if you want. This also technically means, so DRM is digital rights management. And this has got pros and cons uh, about this app. For example, people hate it when they buy a TV show. But they bought it on their phone, and therefore they can only see it on their phone, even though they've got a big screen TV. But the DRM was set up that it can only be viewed on the phone. DRM free content, oftentimes you can buy it once and view it many places. Uh, DRM content, oftentimes, is you have to pay to view it on one device and pay to view it on another device and so forth. So here it's saying recommended. It's up to you to decide which you want. I'll leave the default. I can upload my app directly here. Uh, if it's less than 150 megabytes, if it's more than that, I have to upload it in a special way. Uh, and that's usually for games, because they have a lot of video, audio, etc. So I'm going to select Upload Binary. And click that box. And I'm going to look for my APK file. So you want your APK file. And so it looks at my file and it sees a bunch of stuff about it. Right, this is stuff we filled in in Eclipse. There's the permissions. 
supported screens, etc. So that's just for your information. And you've got device support. Please select only devices you intend to target with this binary file. If you're providing multiple binaries, options selected here will be disabled in subsequent uploads. Uh, so I can have here make my app available, first of all, all non-Amazon -Android, non Android devices based on my manifest. So here that means, you know, this is a non-Amazon device. It's an LG 730. It's running, you know, uh, plain Android. So that's, so it would be, I would be able to download it to this device. So people that have the Kindle, the various versions of the Kindle, the Fire, Fire Phone, Amazon TV, all of that, I can say make my app also available on those devices. I will say yes, leave these defaults, make it available to just about everyone. I suppose that if you had multiple uh, multiple binaries, you might make one for tablet devices and one for, uh, for phone geometry devices. Yep, that's a very good point. I could go back and redevelop my app so that I know I'm targeting a 7-inch device, and then I've got an option here to upload a binary for that target device. Here I'm just using the same one for everything, which might not be the most effective or efficient, but I've got the option to, to do targeting. I can uh, set language support. Mine's only in English, so I've got it on English, but I've got other languages too. Export compliance. You have to turn this on. I certify this app may be imported to and exported from the US and all other countries and regions in which we operate our program, etc. And it talks about encryption and so forth. You basically have to say that you certify that if you want to publish. Amazon devices do not support the Google Maps API. However, the Amazon Maps API provides interface parity. Um, I don't know if that will really hurt or affect us, that is, in any way, because we are accessing that directly to the website rather than running it through like the API, the Java API. So there's nothing you can do here. Just turn it on or off. I'll leave that on. You can change the binary name here if you want. I'll leave it as is. Testing instructions are optional, but I'm not sure if these are for Amazon or for uh, other or for yourself. Maybe for the alpha and beta testers. The alpha and beta testers, perhaps. I'm sure. Well, I'm not going to do anything here. Um, so now, right here little thing, uh, you don't want to put save and add binary because it'll want you to put another version of your app as if you were going to target other devices. You want to click just save. So eventually I'm going to have all greens here and then my device, uh, my app will be uploaded and I'll be able to have people actually check it out. Question? Is, is there a a way that you can make your app more available to certain people or like the alpha and beta testing? Yes, under the live app testing section, there's a whole section here about create a test version of your app and then add and distribute to your testers. So you will be able to, to have a core group of people to alpha or beta test the app. And then and so if, if you want your app only to be used for like an in-house company, do you is that how people do it? Yeah. Can you just never publish it to the whole world? No, no, oh, okay, I see. No, if you want, uh, if you want only in-app, uh, it's this would be different because this the purpose of this is to test it. It is, I suppose, it could work for distribution locally like that too, but it seems that if you're going to put it on this app store, it's you can target it to countries and regions, but not like internal. So, and there's, and so there's not a method like if someone wants the app, they, they send in a request and, they, and you, you get to decide yes or no. I don't see that option here either. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd have to do a little more research to see what sort of, you know, intranet distribution there is. Um, but this might be a way to, to go about it, just a little bit roundabout, but this might be a way. So we're going to wrap up at this point because our, our app is not complete yet. We need all of these assets here, these uh, screenshots and such. We'll do that when we come back next time. But at this point, if you were following along, we've, we've, we've created our developer account and we're, we're really close to getting our app out to the world. Uh, so any general questions? At this point, remember, when we were, as we wrap this up, you want to take, of course, a copy of today's work. You want to take your key store with you, and if you did your, if you exported your APK, you want to take that with you. Of course, you can do it again next time. But what I do recommend is don't forget to take your key store, especially if you are going to be reusing it legitimately. Okay. That'll be it for the moment. When we come back. Next time we'll create these assets, and we'll see more about what Amazon offers, and then we'll see perhaps what is available in the alternative on Google Play. We'll talk about uh, social media and marketing our app, and uh, all of this will then complete the app in total, which we'll have from beginning to end, creating an app and distributing it. In. Thank you for coming. If you uh, came in late, don't forget to sign in. If you want to sign out, you can, and I'll do it for you. See you.